Hello everyone. I'm so excited for today's workshop crafting event. So jump on, say hi. I'm gonna give everybody a minute because you probably, for those of you that RSVP'd for this event, probably just got that in your inbox and just clicking over to this link. So I'm gonna give everyone a moment, probably a little bit longer than I usually do. So uh, say hi so that I'm not talking to myself in the comments, okay? And I'm super excited to share with you guys some hopeful, uh, helpful tips, hopefully they're helpful, as far as how to style a tear tray. And of course, my personal style is to try to simplify the process as much as possible. <laughs> so kind of create this rhythm and this pattern that you can kind of build around. And then at the same time, cute, right? Simple and cute. I've always, that's personally, I've always been my personal style. Um, and whenever I'm in the mood, I'll go a little bit more extravagant or a little bit more detailed or a little bit more this, but for the most part, my baseline, <laughs> my baseline is always like this simple, cute, simple, cute. So I'm excited to share with you some of those, um, general tips, tricks, um, that you can pay attention to, be aware, mindful of, um, if you are interested in styling a tear tray of your own. They are so, so much fun. They really are. And so if anyone is not familiar with, it, with what a tear tray is, hopefully by the end of this, you're a little bit more familiar with it as well. So again, I'm going to just give everyone just a couple more minutes to jump on, like I said, and make sure that we all can see each other. Okay. Um, if I don't happen to see your comments, because I'll be sharing a lot, and as you can see, I'm, I'm standing up. Usually when I do other crafting events, it's like I'm sitting down, playing to create a scrapbook layout or something, right? Um, so hopefully I don't get too all over the place here. All right. Okay, let's get started. So what is a tear tray, right? So a tear tray is basically one, a multi-level so it has multi-levels like this. And then what's fun about this is that you can add different decor items and pieces into it and you can style it your way uh, for different seasons or again, towards maybe your home decor. Um, there's a lot of options you can, you can decorate a tear tray with, but it is really fun. It's a great place to kind of centralize like a focal point in your home, but just also have fun creating. Again, whether that's the different seasons or um, holidays are a lot of fun. So I've enjoyed really playing with mine. Um, where can you display a tear tray? Well, if you have the room, <laughs> I think one time somebody's like, I don't have the room, which I totally understand. I actually used to live with my five kids. We remodeled this home and we lived in this 1200 it was a little over 1200 foot square foot home um i actually had a little closet that i kept all my creating stuff so i'm really excited to have a creating room and a space again but for me i actually display my tier tray in my entryway um on kind of this table I, you can kind of see it not really here let me go down a little bit just so you guys can see that for a moment so this this actually is in my um entryway hallway um, but also a lot of times I've seen people do them for their island in their kitchen. Um, you can do a really cute one that has maybe more of a bathroom theme, or if you happen to have a guest room, you can do a really fun theme for your guest room. Uh, just lots of places you could do family room, office, heck, you can have one in your create room if you want and do a really fun create theme, which now that I said it, I kind of I kind of want one. So lots of places that you can display them. Um, like I said, I like mine in that entryway. I like that um, having that centralized location that just adds a little bit of personalized touch when they when I have guests come over and to my home um, and just kind of set that mood based off of the season. So I enjoy that uh, one for myself, and then hopefully it also warms those that come over as guests to my house. All right, so what do we need to get started? <laughs> okay, we need a tear tray, and there's so many different designs in them. This one I picked up at Hobby Lobby, 
And I was personally looking for one with a th three tier tray. I wanted one that had three tier, but there's some that have two tier. So it's really up to you and your personal interest when it comes to what style of tier tray you like. Um, there's wood, metal, there's colored ones. You can paint ones, you can do a DIY, like literally create one of your own. There's so many YouTube videos on how to take different coasters and hot glue them together. Um, but it's just completely up to you, right? And um, so different colors, different trays. And so, oh, also another thing I actually paid attention to, and I'll actually go over this a little bit more, was just the height between them. And I'll share that why here in a minute. Then you also want to gather some items that you're gonna decorate inside of the tray. And we're gonna do a fall one today together. We're gonna decorate a fall one and because I'm a sucker for fall. <laughs> and so we're gonna decorate one of those together. But just for reference, some items that you could put inside of your tier tray, because some of you might be like, well, what do we put into it, right? And you could do different ornaments, cute little uh, small seasonal items. If you're doing one that's more for a season or a holiday, uh, jars, mugs, uh, faux fruit or vegetables are really cute. And I'll kind of share the thought process about when to choose them and what to get. Um, little tiny baskets. <laughs> Think small, mini to tiny to petite is kind of what you want to think here. Um, small bowls, I've seen small bowls or little cups stacked up together if you're maybe doing, I was gonna say if you're doing like a kitchen one, but really it's cute if you had the cute patterns on the cups. It's just, it's elemental. So you really, I don't think you have to have any rules or rhyming there. Um, I like to have little picture frames. So um, just because you know, I'm a big fan of pictures and the sentimental of them, but so like you can even do picture stands. So again, we'll create with some of those uh, and or accent signs, like little saying signs, things like that are always fun. And then of course, I always like to add a little bit of my own creation to my tear tray style overall which is where these new elements that work so great with the designer templates that you can create different ones. I won't spend too much time on this. Actually, we have a really fun article. If you guys haven't seen this, it's over on the blog. And these new items are in the shop. Here, I actually have one here. So this little wood truck. But then it works with our Tiny Seasons designer template. And then you can fill the truck with different designs and I just cut those out of paper and so um, we'll link that in the comments here so that you can check that out when you have a free moment but again you can create little ones different ones for different seasons I use mostly all the cards or some of the accessory sets in the designer template sets to create these that was fun and then of course I love fall so that's just a really cute one too and we also have um, so these are just blank focal points items that you can build inside of your tray. So again, I'm going to go over that and they do come and then you can decorate on top. You can use fabric and felt, which I did on this one, or you can use good old paper as well. So lots of fun ways that you can kind of dress those up. I, I really want to, I've been meaning to, I want to do one that's more with haunted accessory for Halloween and use the haunted house kind of coming off of it, maybe the moon, but using this as that foundation to kind of create my own DIY item to add to my tier tray. So those are kind of a peek at some of those items that I will be using in today's tier tray creation. Um, there's also <laughs> the live simply and the spread kindness. If you guys have those, hopefully if you picked them up in the last release or whatever, um, I think it was last, yeah. Um, and you haven't played with them yet, then hopefully by the time we're done creating this tray together that you're inspired and encouraged to go pull them out and to design your own little accent um, with them. They're super fun inside of the trays, but you can also just use them as a basic design element, which I'll 
kind of cover here in a minute as well. Now, those items, um, the team put up for sale for 15% off, but it's only for a few more days. So I think it's through, I think it's through October 4th. So just this week, coming week. Um, so if you want to check those out, click on the link above in the description when we are done with this workshop today. All right. Now let's get into the knit and gritty with tips and, um, for styling the tray. So the first thing I want to share with you guys is sometimes we can just start going and buying all these little items that we see. And I know I was kind of a sucker when I kind of started to really enjoy, um, the tier tray and adding my style to it. But of course, wanting a little bit of that creation of my own. So I really enjoyed those products that we did because I love that sentimental um, element to the overall design. Um, the first thing you want to think about is what theme or color you're going to do and then start gathering in kind of a semi coordinated style based off of whatever you're doing. So for example, if we're doing fall, um, I want all my fall um, items to be similar in the color. And so I don't want like a really, right? If I have these oranges, I want them to be similar, not one to be too far off or, or um, kind of clashing with the overall vibe. And I would recommend, okay, so the first tip is to coordinate the color scheme. So when you're buying, think about what items you might already have and do they coordinate together. And you want to kind of keep it cohesive because one thing I have noticed is that if I'm like, well, I'm going a Halloween theme and I have some in there that are kind of have like a color scheme that is a specific black and orange, right? And then I see this other really cute item that's uh, purple. Okay, great. So we just pulled purple in, but then I see this other really cute item and it's like a neon green. And then I see this other item that's like, neon yellow, <laughs> right? Um, whenever you add too many colors in, so I would just suggest sticking about three to four color palettes. And the reason why is because when you do that, it starts to almost look messy. And so think about the items that you are have for a specific theme or um, interest that you might have, because I've seen cute ones for like baking, whatever that might be. Just try to stick around three to four color palettes between all of those items so that it doesn't get overwhelming in the messy look. So hopefully that makes sense. All right, tip number two, design with a variety of height and sizes of items, okay? So I was thinking about this and I think we're gonna break it down and think in sizes of large, medium, small. In retrospect, of course, to a tier tray, so not like large, medium, small. We're talking like large, medium, small. You know what I mean? Um, for those of you that might uh, scrapbook the Kiwi Lane style, we've shared a lot with our process of picking paper and we talk about a main pattern is kind of that focal point and then you have your supporting patterns and then you kind of have these blenders that just bring it all together and cohesively you know, bring that vibe of your patterns all working together and hopefully it calms down the overall creation but allows you to utilize different patterns and designs, right? That's not too far thinking for even the concept of tier trays, but we're gonna kind of refer to it as large, medium, small, <laughs> okay? So the large items are your main patterns, your focal points. So that's what I love about these sizes here with the wood circle that we have available in the shop and that you can create different ways. This would be a really good focal point. It's larger in statue, and so you can stick it in the tray. We might have to bring closer to the, the lovely tray now that I see it, right? So you can see that's larger and it will get placed right inside of here. Now other designs, of course, so again, they're larger in retrospect to a tier tray, <laughs> okay? Um, another fun like item that I have that I would consider in the large scale would be this pumpkin. And I just picked this up at TJ Maxx. So that's, that's what I mean as far as large 
if you were thinking in the size of a tray. Maybe a large little mug would be considered a large item. Um, a, a bigger squared sign that you might love would be a large item. So you're gonna want to think of different large items. Um, and really with a three tier tray, I really only need two to three focal points. And even that, um, averagely about two. So let me break that down. So when I have two large items, usually what I do is I stick one on the base and then I'll stick one on the top, right? So if I have this down here and you want one at the top, um, so if you had like this really cute, here, let me, cause we're gonna end on fall. So let me share it with a holiday. So I'd have this one down here and another focal one on the top like that. Sorry guys, yeah. I was thinking we're working live, but we're gonna do as best as we can live. Okay, so you start by placing those focal items, the larger items, and you place one at the top and at the bottom. Let me push it right here and see if we can zoom into our tear tray on that. Let me bring it a little bit closer. I might be out of frame, but you guys can at least hear me and see the tear tray, right? Everyone can see that? Let me clear my table so I can bring it a little bit closer so that our tray is in frame. There we go, okay. So I'm gonna start by pacing my large items, and this is what I recommend to get started, and then we're gonna build up around that right? Kind of like the frames and just the borders. I keep thinking of a scrapbook term. Um, I got these little easels um, that really help with making these stand. If you have another trick, do share with us in the comments. I just picked these up at Hobby Lobby and I think they had a variety of different ones, but I just went with a general wood one because I figured it would go with any different design or theme that I might have, right? So we're going to put that inside of here. Maybe I had that at the top. There we go. And we're gonna build around that focal point. Okay. Now, if I wanted to add another focal point, then I would suggest that you put it to the top and you offset your large items. So, for example, if I wanted to put this, I could put this at the top and I would want to keep it on opposite sides, like that, okay? Now, again, I recommend at least two. If you have a three-tier tray, then another item in retrospect, as far as size, you could throw that in and play around with that. But you can kind of see, whoops, it takes away from that focal point of the other items. That's why I recommend with a tier, three-tier tray that you just bring that in. Okay, so this is why I said I wanted at least seven inches. So when I was buying my tier tray, I made sure that it had at least seven inches of the height on the bottom because I knew that I would want room for the larger items. So I'm gonna take that one off. I'll probably just use this in another home decor place. But I, probably, I actually really love <laughs> both of those items, <laughs> okay? All right. Now, as far as your medium layers go, you're looking for items that have a little bit more substance, but in size respect, right, are not large. And so you wanna start with these, uh, looking for a variety of different ones. I'll give some options here. Um, like I have this little metal camera, if maybe I was doing a fun little design. Um, I have, this little wagon by the way I picked this up at Target recently <laughs> recently so lots of fun um, I think you can even use this for different seasons so I enjoy that like filling it with different things that would be more of a medium size so you're looking at height comparison at this point if I was doing like a Halloween these little cute Halloween jars but we're going full on fall right now um, even like 
this, even though it might be taller than the other items, the overall space and size that it takes up is not the same. But again, so you're paying attention to the variation of the size um, of each item, right? So the height of each item. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take those medium pieces and you're gonna collage them, um, kind of layer them around and next to those main focal points. So you're gonna put those in. If you have a tear tray that has a high edge like this, something else I recommend is picking up some items that you can kind of position some of those more medium sized things on. So maybe over here, I put that there. Or another thing is like you can layer some pieces of wood together. So it just really depends on if you lose that inside of your tray. I lose it just a little bit, so maybe I'll go back in and add these. So we'll be sharing these overall tips so far. Um, but again, when you're thinking about different elements to add to your tray, think of medium, large, medium, and then we'll get to kind of what small means here in a moment. Um, even see how this, this pumpkin, this is a good medium size. So I could choose to kind of cluster those here. So medium is a good place to kind of put those in that middle tray if you have a three tier tray. So again, you could probably get away with that large item, but I think it's really anchors the focal points with having those larger items on top and bottom. If you just have a two, a two tier tray, then I would recommend keeping your large item. Well, I was just about to say, I think you could keep it anchored to the bottom layer, but honestly, I think you could do top bottom on a two tier tray. It depends on what you, what you just, um, what appeals to you in that. So think of just pulling in whatever those medium sized items. So I even have this little, I've had this for years this little squirrel. I think I probably picked it up at Hobby Lobby. So mixing those in, um, playing with a variety of textures and eye elements, right? So maybe saying, okay. And right now I'm just designing my tier tray to be um, considered with it facing forward. So again, if it's against the wall, then no one will see the back. But one of the fun things about tier trays is that it does go all the way around. So say if you want to put it on your kitchen table, then you would want to kind of design with that in mind as you go around the spaces. But we'll come back to that here in a moment, okay? So at this point, you know, lots of options we can choose from. You know, we even have my wagon <laughs> that I did do it. Um, don't go too overboard though. Choose what you kind of want. Again, if I wanted to go all the way around, I could fit so much more. And what I would do is I would kind of turn my tray and keep decorating up around until I got the look that I want. But again, I'm going to come back to that. Okay. So we'll come back to the wagon being here on the side of that. All right. Now, you can see that my tray already is pretty decently decorated, right? And this is just the various options. I even have, just to show variation of styles, I have these cute little pumpkin stems, um, again, that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. Could be really cute to kind of place in and around if you wanted to change that style. So that's what I love about it is that you can definitely, you know, do it yourself and, and with your personal style um, in mind and play around with what kind of elements. But those again, I'd call medium size compared to, whoop, that was like my third time doing that. All right. I actually really love that pop. So you're going to see with my color palette here, I definitely have between those three to four different colors being represented. I have brown, kind of this brown color, orange, so this brown, orange, and then some green and yellow um, in that, in those cases. 
right? And I feel like with the seasons, you could definitely go off of a whole vibe on those um, and, and those different elements. Okay, why doesn't this want to stay today? Maybe it's the thing doesn't want to spray, spread. There we go. I use it all year long until I go live, <laughs> okay? Like again, I love the thought of uh, little pictures in my collection because you guys can't see me. <laughs> Um, this is a picture from my daughter Riley and she, this was years ago. And what I love about the holidays and fall season. So a lot of times, I don't know if you guys do this. Let me know in the comments if you do with, um, ornaments on the Christmas tree. We have picture ornaments that are from the time that the kids were babies. I have a picture ornament of my mother and father at their wedding. One of me and my husband at my wedding. So it's just over a, a big span of time. And I feel like holidays are a good, always just a fun way to bring back some of those seasonal pictures for even decorating your home. And I'm sure when my kiddos leave my home, I'm gonna cherish that even more. And I hope that I continue to do that so that when, this is way far out y'all, but when my grandbabies come back over, they see these like, you know, every season new pictures of their, their them, and their mother and fathers in different ways. So, so, okay, like I said, I'm trying to see if you guys have questions. I might have to catch them at the end. Now, the last size variation regarding size tip would be small, right? And small is basically just filler. So think of just filler items are your small pieces. I'll tell you from personal experience i played around with some smaller items let me see if i can i thought i brought it over because i thought oh these are so cute they're so small they'd be so fun where did i put it um well like here here's this little small bird i think you could definitely add some of those but again when i noticed when my items got too small you really needed to make sure that you stack them on top of something or they just almost get lost and get a little bit of messy. So if you wanted that, I, the, you're going to raise the height, which almost becomes kind of that medium cluster. So if you have little things like that, you're going to want to add those at this time too, because the filler is kind of that last step. So you want to get your focal anchor item in, so then you want to put in your medium supporting items. And then we want to put in our small filler items. Okay, so I, I personally have started to stay away from these. I feel like they get a little bit trickier to use, but you can, but that's just something I've learned. I, I usually stick towards more of a focal point and then more general medium items. And then I stick in some filler. So the filler can be like moss covering. If maybe you're doing a really cute like more natural one. Um, I know with Easter, you know, a little bit of foss or moss filler in there. It could be artificial like foliage. So it could be items like this where you kind of stick up and cluster around and fill in all those nooks and crannies. You just kind of want to fill those in. And so you're going to, let me keep doing that here. And stick those around and then in this case since it's fall I'm going to stick some of these just little leaf things that I have here as well and again just filling in those spaces that you might have um, other fillers could be like pulling apart some floral like floral stems and tucking them into the tray where you see fit uh, maybe little mini eggs for an Easter design, could be a good filler. So you kind of just want to kind of fill in the empty spaces around that. And then I have a couple more. And so I could pull this apart if I wanted to, but I kept it together and I just kind of clustered that and then tucked it in. I'm going to kind of tuck that in. So nothing too too crazy in that. If you wanted that to show, you would have to bring that high. See how that would need to go high? I don't have another 
stand right next to me, so I'll keep that right there for now. But I love the picture kind of peeking its head through, so that's cute. So you can kind of keep those and just fill those sections in. Tuck them underneath things. You can lift some things up, tuck them in, and you could do a mixture. So like I have some of this green. Actually, I wouldn't want to do these both coming out my right side. Always think of opposites as well. And I'll talk more about that because that is definitely another tip that I want you guys to think about. Sometimes with the foliage, you kind of have to take things out, push it back in um, if you need to be on those items. And then I'm gonna pull that one apart and add just a little bit of a tuck there. So small, small filler is what you're looking for when you think of small items on that. And there we go. We just designed a tear tray. And it has a little bit of my DIY creations with, of course, the overall vibe um, and mood. This is, this is what I love about fall. <laughs> I love this about fall. Um, but of course, you could change it up for each season, each holiday, if you wanna do a different one. If I decided to go with more of this plaid, again, probably my color palette would be gold. I would look for gold items in the medium size. Again, it could be cute jars or um, other elements like that, reds. And I would probably pull on more of this checker, um, like black, and then even some natural green in that. So kind of playing around with that. All right, so the next tip I have for you guys is definitely um, kind of circling back to that, uh, that these are, you could do it if you are having it against a wall, you don't really have to keep in mind the other side, but if you want it like in a centerpiece of a table, then you tear trays, what's wonderful about them is they don't really have a backside to them and so it, you can make it look pretty all the way around your tray. It just depends on where you are displaying your tray. So um, let me go ahead and carefully twist this so we can kind of play around with that. Another thing I love about that is, right, that even these little things, depending on how you have those stand up, you can even have them lay in here, by the way. I'll come back to that style. I've seen a lot of people do that so, but these are even double-sided. So either you could do a nice clean wash, which is what I did on this one so that it's, it has a little bit of a finished look, or um, you could decorate it one on each side. So again, these are 15% off. The link is above in the description. If you're not displaying it, like mine is not displayed somewhere that you would see all the way around the tray. Mine is displayed in the hallway uh, which has a wall behind it. So if that's the case, then <laughs> use both sides and, and decorate each side up, create a different design for different seasons on those. So that's kind of a thing on that. Um, and I'll show another design. I didn't even think about that until now. So if I wanted to add a little bit more um, around that, then same thing, we would probably add a couple fun different you know, items into here, uh, maybe a pumpkin, right? And then again, we would put filler into our little nooks and crannies here. So we just kind of tuck, tuck it in, okay? So you would decorate all the way around, however you want to do that. You would decorate all the way around if it's going to be showcasing in a place that maybe you would. And so you can see how fun that can be for uh, different seasons and different looks, right? So you could change it with the holidays, um, change it with the season. You can have multiple, like I said, maybe one in a master bedroom, a bathroom, a fun one in a kitchen. You could do a theme like hot cocoa. Could be really cute where you have like hot cocoa items. And so it almost becomes like a uh, visual tear tray decor plus a serving tray. <laughs> so you could have a lot of fun with those different ones. 
Um, let's see, the other tips I had to share with you guys is um, you could decorate the edges. So let me show you kind of what I mean there. This is really fun. I just started to play around with this where I had these and I had these forever. I think I picked them up at a dollar store once and they're just clips with a little pumpkin on them. And, or you can even use tiny season, the little, uh, yeah, I'm gonna totally do that. <laughs> Anyways, the tiny season designer template and you can have some paper that matches the rest of your design if you want. But if you want, you could decorate the outside edge. And so if I wanted to maybe add a little banner here. Banner go. Hmm, where'd my banner go? Um, I'll find it here in a minute. It'll pop up right when I don't need it. <laughs> I just created this most adorable banner. Oh, there it is. It's on the phone or on the floor. Okay. So you could you know, wrap this around and clip it in. So that's what I mean when you, I say you can add a little bit of design to the outside edges as well. So that's just one idea you could do, um, you know, uh, wood beads. Have seen like little wood beads. Those are pretty popular. I actually don't own any. Um, I've seen a lot of people kind of put the wood beads in and then strand them uh, down the side of their tray. So just kind of overflowing out of the tray in different ways. And yes, you can make little banners like this using the designer templates and cutting them on felt or paper. This is done on felt. So if you haven't checked that out, we have a great blog post article over on our website at kbling.com that shares how to use the designer templates and even cut them out of felt as your medium versus paper. So lots of cute things you can do with that. Um, so that's kind of the tips that I have for you guys on those. Let me see if anybody has any questions. If you do, please let me know in the comments so that I can hopefully catch them if I missed them before. Um, while I'm waiting to see if any of you guys have comments, I was gonna share with you guys, if you don't want these all to stand up straight, I've seen where people kind of lay them in on a pile of filler. So let me take this out for a moment. So you would have a lot more filler down here. You know, it's still some over here. And so you would have that filler, but then you would kind of have these items just kind of laying inside your tray, kind of laying backwards. So if you don't want them to stand up, then you would just add enough filler there that it kind of um, stands up on its own, or maybe you put a little thing that kind of bends it backwards, right? So that it kind of ha it has more of this laying look. You could do standing with laying. You can play around with those um, depending on the items that you're trying to place inside of your jar. Okay, I don't see any questions, you guys. Yes, is in the banner so fun? <laughs> it's super fun. You could do, I, I mean, I think the middle is a good place for a little bit of a banner. Um, if you love more of a messy look, then go, you know, go at it. Do as many as you like. But if that's kind of personally what I do. But overall, very simple, easy to put together. Again, you don't need many items. And it could be a little bit of addicting. <laughs> Every time you go, you know, to Target or whatever, you're like, ooh, those items, um, but just think about what you already have. And if you're feeling like, oh, this space feels really empty, then think of sizes. Like, okay, I need more medium sizes because I'm feeling like I don't have enough kind of, um, of those general supporting items. And then if you had a bigger item, that would be your focal point, but you don't need too many focal points. And when it comes to supporting, you want them to kind of be general or, um, or different in size proportion as well, right? 
Um, the last thing I wanted to share with you, so this is a very fall one, but I use these often in my other tier tray designs. And these are just, you know, standard um, full plants, which go with so many different items. So you can have repeat items. So maybe there's a jar that's metal, but that metal jar will go with Easter, it'll go with, you know, uh, summer, it'll go with your overall um, standard style. So I like have a standard style, that's actually these, this color scheme. This is my standard style for my home, which I did another video on that, just creating these little standard ones. And so if there's no holiday or no special season, <laughs> right? Um, kind of in between seasons and then I go with the standard one that just kind of matches my home and then I um, Change those up in different ways So what my entry table looks like let me kind of clear some of these items out is I actually have My tear tray that again that I like to kind of dress up and create different ones for each of the different seasons. And I kind of stick that to the side. Because it's fall, I have this little garland, but I don't usually have garlands. And, and then over here, I actually put <laughs> a little snap frame. And depending on the season, um, I have this little fall one that I created with the fall design kit that I still love. It still speaks to me. <laughs> but I also love the one that we just created, I think a month or so back, where we used a picture inside of the snap frame. That was a lot of fun. So if you haven't checked the snap frames out, check those out. They're super cute. And also with these little decorative items that are great uh, anchor focal points for tier tray decorating, they are also can be really cute as just basic design elements as well. So if you wanted to um, just have it stand on an easel on its own, and maybe you kind of collage that next to a couple elements or whatever, um, you don't have to go heavy on your decorating, especially if you're not a heavy decorator for different holidays then having a centralized location that you kind of do bring in a little bit of that vibe and mood for different seasons or um, moods <laughs> that you might have, uh, it's kind of a fun place. So if you do have an entry table, I really enjoy having that centralized place that I can just kind of create um, and play with for different holidays and different seasons. Of course, that's not that's not fall, that's not gonna go there. But you can add, of course, a little something else. Let me see, I have this cute pumpkin. I've had that one for a while too, so. Well, that is a look at how to style a tear tray. So just an overview, um, just really quickly. So tip number one, you want to coordinate the color scheme. So think of the color scheme, try not to go too crazy as far as how many color palettes. I say three, three, four is the, the warm spot. Five is kind of like three to five. We'll just say three to five, right? Um, tip number two, design with a variety of height and sizes of decor pieces. And think of them as far as um, large for focal items, medium for those supporting layered items that you can kind of layer and cluster next to them, and then small for more of filler items. So if you're looking at purchasing some items, then think about that. And um, you can definitely think about items that go with multiple designs. So something like that. I use these for Easter. I use them for my standard design uh, for my home. I've used them even at Christmas time, I think. So I, you can use real plants or fake plants. <laughs> Those are fake because the real ones will die in my house. 
You, step tip number four, you can decorate the outside of the edge if you want to play a little bit more and get creative in that way as well. And then overall, it's completely up to you on how you display it, what you put into it, like so many options that you can place inside of the tray. If you want to decorate all the way around your tray, um, that's always, of course, fun as well. And those are kind of a basic tips for how to style your tier tray. So thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. I hope those tips were helpful and I can't wait to see your tier trays that you create and design of your own and to see your style, your personal DIY style come through that. Um, I think someone just posted in the community a fun sunflower theme one. So cute and she just talked about how much she loves sunflowers and that's so personal and it just shows her personal DIY style in that as well. So definitely share with us in the community if you happen to design your own tier tray. And if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to ask as well. We're here to help inspire each of us um, all together. And I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. All right, take care. Bye guys.